Don't fight the closed doors, the disappointments, the people that walk away. You don't know what God is up to. Sometimes he has to move you away from what you're comfortable with. You can't see it, but he knows something is limiting you. You may go through these seasons of testing, seasons of proving. It's easy to get discouraged, slack off, but you need to keep being your best. Nothing is changing. That's okay. Keep doing the right thing. Listen, folks, success is hard. It's really hard. There are nothing but difficulties in achieving your goal. We just need to get that part straight. It's not easy. It's hard changing your life. It was very difficult to pick myself up each day believing that I could do it. There were times that I doubted myself. But I got news for you. Having lived in a car for three years, being not successful is hard too. Now here's the difference between the two halls. When you are not successful, there are no options. You can't decide where you're going to dinner. You can't decide if you're going on vacation. You can't decide what you're going to eat. On the road to success, it's hard, but it creates options for you. Many of you know that God will make things uncomfortable to get you out of your comfort zone, to put you in a place of purpose and destiny where you can stretch your gifts that you didn't even know you had to rise to the height of your calling and soar above your adversities and fly like the eagle you were created to be. And here's what I want to say to you. For those of you that have experienced some hardships, don't give up on your dream. God has an incredible life for you. But you got to be willing to go through something to get to it. Success ain't free. They ain't passing out money, man. That ain't how this works. You got to go get it. But in order to go get it, you got to want something. You got to have stuff you dream about. Being successful is not an accident. You know what I can't stand when I hear Christians say, if it was the Lord's will, I would have had some money by now. No, no, no. You can't dump that on God. And you can believe in God all you want, but if you don't work, man, it ain't going to happen. He said faith without works is dead. I'm just asking you, man, to try something new. Now, you might not want this life. You might not want what it takes to get here. But if you want this life, you got to put in your work. Now, if that ain't what you want to do, then good luck. You keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to keep getting what you've been getting. I would try something else if I was y'all. Too many people in society fall back on the word luck, not knowing the circumstances of someone else's success. You see people who do big things and you automatically say, wow, that guy's so lucky. And let me tell you how insulting that sounds to somebody who has literally grinded their to build something worthwhile. Don't say, wow, that guy's so lucky. Say, hey, that's a fortunate dude. He's very fortunate. When you say, oh, that guy got lucky, you're telling the universe and you're telling yourself subconsciously that you believe that you are not in control of your circumstances. And guess what? If that's what you believe, you aren't. So I'm going to ask you guys to please stop using the word luck when you talk about other people's success and use the term fortunate. It's going to help you out and it's going to make you sound like not an asshole, okay? But going to work every day, grinding your ass off, and then becoming a multimillionaire, that's not luck. That's action and result. That's not luck. You weren't pointing out how lucky he was when he couldn't pay his bills. How about when he made less than what you made for the first 15 years holding on to his dream? You weren't there saying he was lucky. Or how about when he's working at 2 a.m.? Or how about when he's working on weekends and holidays when you're out celebrating with your family? Where were you? So quit using the word luck and start using the word fortunate. It's going to make you sound like not such an asshole because there's nothing more insulting to somebody who grinded their ass off than when someone says, he got lucky. Quit believing in luck because it doesn't exist in terms of action and reaction and start believing in work. Start believing in results that come from your actions. And when you do that, guess what? That's what starts to happen. So many people in life, we all know these guys, right? They, they peaked in high school, they were quarterback of the team, and and they're like, uh, bro, back in the day I was the man, uh, and they haven't done anything with their lives, right? And we see these people all the time, and the reason these people 
don't progress is because they, they focus on the glory days, the things they have achieved in the past. If this is you, you have to stop this behavior. When you focus on this, guys, that is energy that you could be putting into actually improving and focusing on the task at hand, which is today. Stop playing. Life is serious. Life is serious. I'm here because of God's grace and mercy, not because of me. I believe that there's something we're supposed to do. I've made a lot of mistakes, but for some reason, God saw fit for me to still be here. There's one thing that I did that was right. I kept using my gift. You have a gift. And if you don't know what it is, don't stop until you find it. And I kept looking for ways in which I could use my voice. And I didn't know that it was my superpower. But because I did not believe in myself, for 14 years I sat on the sideline. In life, when you don't have enough courage and insight to know that where you are is not your rightful place, life will move on you. And I'm saying to you, if you've had life snatched the rug out from under you, it's not over until you win. Listen, everything that I've experienced, it's caused me to be this person that I'm still the good, the bad, the ugly, everything. I'm still here. I'm not taking a dirt nap. Fourth stage cancer. I'm still here. And I'm not through yet. The best is yet to come. It's the best day of my life. And don't judge what the possibilities are for your life based upon where you are right now. Your true place is where your thoughts can take you. Say that to yourself, this is my time, even if you don't have no money to rub together. In order for you to reinvent yourself, you've got to let another mind be in you. Because the mind that you now have does not serve you. You have greatness in you. And you just got to stop playing around and get serious. People that are serious, always looking for a way to win. What if all of us, when something happens to us, rather than say, I can't do it, I don't have the money, I don't know the right people. What if all of us decided, that's what life is about. Keep moving. You face no's and rejections every day. Keep moving. People get more excited about a sporting event than the life that's in them to manifest their great. That's the reason that Dr. Miles Monroe said, rob the cemetery of your gifts. Most people are mentally dead. They're just following the crowd, following the follower. Their forces and, and systems designed to destroy your sense of self. And in order to get out, you gotta be hungry. My message is not fair. It's for people who, who said, as I said one day, there's got to be more. Stop playing. Get serious. People get hung up on the fact that I'm not a millionaire yet. But hold up, man. There's joy in the journey. How about if you celebrate making $50,000 a year? Don't you remember when you didn't have that? See, there's joy in the journey. People get bogged down with I ain't a millionaire yet and they remain unhappy. And now you block all the rest of the blessings God got for you. The more you're grateful, the more he gives you to be grateful for. He not going to keep giving you stuff if what you got you can't handle already. You kill more blessings by not being grateful. That's the number one blessing blocker, lack of gratitude. You know what I learned? You can't cry about what's on your plate when your whole goal was to eat. There is not a person in this room that is not constantly up under attack. No matter how blessed you've been, no matter how successful, no matter how accomplished, no matter how healthy, no matter how fruitful you are, somewhere in your life, you are either being attacked 
or about to be attacked in some area of your life. And God says, I'm going to bless you, but you've got to dress for the battle while you receive the blessing. With every blessing, there is a battle. I would venture to say the greater the blessing, the greater the battle. The enemy would not send that level of battle against you if there were not that level of blessing before you. The level of battle you face is an indication of the level of blessings that you stand to receive. No robber robs an empty house. Nobody holds up a bag lady because she doesn't have anything to steal. If you're up under attack, there's something to be gained. So you got all dressed up not to run. You got dressed up to stand, not to give place or territory, not to evacuate the turf that's yours. You must learn to handle the negative. Don't ignore it. Handle it. You don't have to live in it. You don't have to dwell on it. But you do have to handle it. My opinion. I know some people teach. Just turn your head real quick and say, there's no weeds, there's no weeds, there's no weeds. They'll take your guard. So you've got to handle the negative. Here's what part of it is. It's called the great war between good and evil. And there is a war on it. The minute you were born, you got involved in the war between good and evil, between darkness and light, between negative and positive, between evil and good, between tyranny and democracy, between weeds and human activity. I mean, the war is on. If good does not arouse itself and become active, guess what moves in? Evil. It's a war. A mental war, a physical war, a financial war, between enterprise and ease, between accomplishment and failure. It's a war. You're being fought by imaginations, shadows and ghosts. Some of you are stressed to death over what ifs and maybes. You've been stabbed by suppose. You lay in the bed wrestling with ghosts of what ifs and maybes and suppose and I think and I heard and I felt and you wake up tired in the morning because you, you might have slept but you didn't rest because all in your sleep you've been fighting. Most people are living their lives from a heart place and not a head place. They are so engrossed with what the heart feels that they have not covered what the head thinks. Most people are governed by their emotions. They're having a hard experience in a head fight. You will never win a battle if you're having a hard experience in a head fight. You're telling the enemy how you feel has nothing to do with what you know. And if you're going to deal with a knower, never approach a knower with feelings. you got to approach a knower with facts. The enemy wants to cut off your head and leave you with feelings. Real decisions that move your life along are not coming out of your emotions, they're coming out of your head. Real opportunities that God would open up for you have to come out of your head and not out of your feelings. You, there are so many people that are so abstract and they're just moving along from day to day out of their emotions and their fear. I don't know. I'm just not feeling it today. I'm just not feeling it today. Come back on Thursday. I might be feeling on Thursday. I'm not in the mood for this. I can't handle this. I did, I did, I did, I did, I did. And every time you do it, you're canceling out opportunities. A person who does not function out of their head is a person without government. A person who moves totally out of their emotions is exempt from the greater opportunity than life because you will forfeit what God has given you because of how you feel. Somebody asked me one time, what quality would I pick if I wanted to work with somebody? And you know what I picked first, number one, strong feeling. Please, number one, give me somebody that feels strong about most anything. I don't even care just so they believe it even if they disagree with me. Wonderful, just so they disagree vigorously. I'm not saying it's easy to win those kind of people to your point of view, but I'd rather do that than to try to resurrect people from the dead. Pump them up every month, pump them up, pump them up. I pass. 
God did not promise you that your feelings would line up with the facts. How many of us are living a headless life because we have not separated how we feel from what we know? You can't, you can't work with people like that. You really can't work with people like that because if I criticize your work, it doesn't mean I criticize you. And to have to babysit your feelings when I don't have time to babysit your feelings, I need you to correct the problem and go back to work. It's not personal. If you do it right, I know that's culture shock to a lot of you. Everything you've ever gotten, you've gotten out of your feelings. But let me tell you, the devil is not fighting you over your feelings. He is fighting you over your head. He is giving you images and imaginations and threats of disaster to send your head into a panic mode so that you will digress mentally from the leadership that the rest of you needs. It has to come from the facts and not the feelings. Are you a kingdom without a king? Are you so busy managing the emotional relationships that you have that you don't have the energy to think the thoughts you need to think to go where you need to go? Are you so busy managing your feelings and the feeling the people around you and trying to make them feel what you feel and, and need what you need and want what you want that you're not making progress in life? The definition of lunacy is to keep doing the same thing expecting a different result. So why are you doing what doesn't work? If flipping out on her isn't working, why are you still doing it? If giving him a piece of your mind hadn't worked in the first 15 years, wouldn't it be a good time now to change strategies? Why are we loyal to ineffectiveness? Why are we loyal with ineffectiveness? And we are loyal to things that we know don't work, but because this is how I feel. You don't have to force yourself or motivate yourself to think negatively, to be depressed, to hate somebody, to want revenge, to want to get back at somebody, to beat yourself up over the head, to feel loaded with guilt. You don't have to make any effort to do that. Your mind is on automatic. It will do that by itself. The next thing that is important is that expect things to get better for you because they are. See, life is cyclic. You're not, what is, whatever experience you're having right now, it has not come to stay. It has come to pass. Not to stay, just to pass. It's just going through. The biggest challenge is, is to know what's happening. This is a part of this thing we call life. This too shall pass. And maintaining perspective, putting it in perspective. See, a lot of us, because of our limited vision of ourselves, a lot of us who begin to focus on problems and enable them to overwhelm us, we begin to think that we have no options. We begin to believe that there's no way out. Repeat after me, there's always a way. I'm unstoppable. This will not get me down. And if I get knocked down, I'm going to be like um, Leo Pascal. You said you're going to have some low moments in life, but when you do, you will have high lows. Because you're going to have sometimes low moments when you won't want to get out of bed. You just want to stay there. There are times you won't want to come out the house. There are times you'll be feeling bad and don't know why what's wrong. I don't know. It's called life. Someone said we have two primary choices in life. We can either accept conditions as they exist, or we can take the responsibility to change them. See, a lot of people want to exempt themselves from taking responsibility. All they want to do is talk about the problem. Every time you see them, they'll tell you their story over and over and over and over again. No, no. You want to take responsibility for your life. I got me here. I can get me out of this. And I'm getting out. I'm not going to be a volunteer victim. George Bernard Shaw said there are two kinds of people in life. You know, he said those that make things happen, those that watch things happen, and those that don't know what happened. And he said the people that get along in this life look around for the circumstances that they want, and if they can't find them, they make them. They create them. Whatever you do, don't lose your head. Because they focus on the glory days, the things they have activated in the part of 
this is your help to stop this behavior when you focus on this guys that is energy that you could be putting into actually improving and focusing on the task at hand which is today stop playing life is serious life is serious i am here because of god's grace and miracle not because of me i believe that there's something we are stopped to do i have made a lot of mistakes but for some reason god so fit for me to still be here here one thing that i did that was right i keep using my gift you have a gift and if you don't know what i is don't stop until you find it and i keep looking for always in which i could use my voice and i did not know that is was my superpower but because i did not believe myself for 14 years i sat on the sideline in life when you don't have enough corrects and instinct to know that here you was not rightful place life will move on you and i'm saying to you if you are had life strange a run out from under you are it's not over until you win listen everything that i explained it experienced it it caused me to be this person that i am still here you are go- good that vet the ugly everything i am still here i am not taking a drift map for a strange cancellor i am still here and i am not sort yet the west is yet to me come to the west <laughs>